Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. So in today's video we'll be exploring what is a gamma glutamyl transferase blood test, which is also commonly known as a GGT blood test. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the gamma glutamyl transferase blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders this blood test for you. So a gamma glutamyl transferase or GGT blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory or hospital. No special preparation is needed for a gamma glutamyl transferase blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. So during the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a gold top or SST blood tube. This blood tube is then sent off to the laboratory where it is analyzed and resulted. So what is gamma glutamyl transferase? So gamma glutamyl transferase or GGT is a type of enzyme which is found in various organs throughout the body. It is especially abundant in the liver, the kidneys, the pancreas, and the heart muscle. Its primary function is to help break down glutathione, which is an important antioxidant that protects cells from damage caused by free radicals. And it is also involved in the transfer of certain amino acids across the cell membranes. So what is a gamma glutamyl transferase or GGT blood test then? So gamma glutamyl transferase blood test measures the levels of the GGT enzyme in your blood. So GGT is an enzyme that is mainly produced by the liver, which means elevated GGT levels in the blood can be an early indicator of liver cell distress, damage or disease. GGT levels are often also elevated in individuals who consume large amounts of alcohol. And the test can help doctors monitor alcohol use, particularly in patients who are being treated for alcohol dependency or those suspected of chronic alcohol abuse. So the GGT test is also part of the liver function test panel that evaluates liver health. It is often used alongside other enzymes like ALT or alanine aminotransferase and AST, aspartate aminotransferase. The GGT test, however, is particularly sensitive to biliary tract issues, such as blockages in the gallbladder. So this is actually quite an important point to note. So in addition to being extremely important for diagnosing liver conditions, it is also an extremely helpful test in revealing patients who suffer from chronic alcohol abuse. And it's also a very important marker as it can also point us towards gallbladder issues or gallbladder stones or any blockages that may be occurring in the gallbladder. So it's quite an important blood test indeed. So the GGT test can also help in diagnosing conditions beyond liver issues, including pancreatitis and heart failure. So remember in the second slide when we spoke a little bit about GGT, we said that it's abundant in the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys, and the heart muscle tissue as well. So any disease, inflammatory process, or infectious processes that include these organs will all cause raised GGT levels on a blood test as well. So it can also be used to differentiate between liver and bone disease when alkaline phosphatase levels are elevated, as both ALP and GGT can be high in liver disease, but only ALP levels are typically elevated in bone disease. So moving along, what are the normal ranges of gamma glutamyl transferase in the blood report? So the normal GGT levels are usually measured in units per litre of blood. And in men, this range falls between 7 to 47 units per litre. And in women, it ranges from 5 to 30 units per litre. And in the elderly, levels tend to increase slightly with age. So now that we know what the normal ranges look like, let's take a closer look at some reasons for abnormally high GGC levels on a blood report. 
So abnormally high levels of gamma glutamyl transferase in the blood can indicate a variety of health issues, particularly related to liver function. Some common causes of elevated GGT levels include number one, liver diseases, so conditions such as hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver, liver cirrhosis, and fatty liver disease can all lead to increased GGT levels. At number two, we can have a bile duct obstruction. So as we mentioned before, blockages in the bile ducts, which can occur due to gallstones or tumors in the gallbladder, may also cause elevated GGT levels. Number three is alcohol consumption. So excessive alcohol intake is a well-known cause of elevated GGT levels and often indicates alcohol-related liver damage. At number four, we have medications. So the use of certain medications, including anticonvulsants and some antibiotics, can also affect the liver function and result in higher GGT levels. So moving along to even more causes, at number five, we have pancreatitis. So inflammation of the pancreas can also lead to increased GGT levels. At number six, we have heart disease. So elevated GGT levels may also be associated with cardiovascular diseases and heart failure. At number seven, we have diabetes. So there is actually a correlation between high GGT levels and insulin resistance or diabetes. So higher GGT levels can also be expected in diabetic patients. And at number eight, we have obesity. So higher GGT levels can also be seen in individuals with obesity, often related to fatty liver disease, which many of these individuals suffer from as well. So now that we're aware of all the causes for abnormally high GGT levels, let's take a closer look at what may cause abnormally low GGT levels on a blood report. So abnormally low levels of gamma glutamyl transferase in the blood are generally less common and not typically associated with significant health concerns. However, low GGT levels can occur in certain situations, including at number one, healthy liver function. So low GGT levels may simply indicate good liver health and function as the enzyme is not being released into the bloodstream in significant amounts. At number two, we have the use of certain medications. So some medications, such as the use of statins or certain anti-inflammatory drugs, may lead to lower than normal GGT levels. At number three, we have hypothyroidism. So an underactive thyroid function can sometimes be associated with lower GGT levels as the body's metabolism is slowed down in cases of hypothyroidism. So moving along, the fourth cause of abnormally low GGT levels is pregnancy. So GGT levels may decrease during pregnancy, particularly in the later stages of pregnancy. At number five, we have malnutrition or deficiencies. So severe malnutrition or deficiencies in certain nutrients may lead to lower than normal GGT levels. And at number six, we have genetic factors. So some individuals may have genetically lower levels of GGT without any underlying health issues. And so the take home message. So as we have just seen, the GGT blood test is a crucial diagnostic tool for evaluating liver health, monitoring alcohol use in patients, and identifying potential blurry or other systemic issues. It is an essential tool for monitoring patients undergoing treatment for liver disease or alcohol abuse, as the GGT test can be used to monitor the effectiveness of treatment as well. A decrease in GGT levels often indicates that the liver is healing or that alcohol consumption has been reduced, and the patient's overall health status is improving. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with some of your friends in the medical community. 
So if you want to encourage me to do even more or to say thanks for all the free information you've received on my channel today, you can say thank you by buying me a coffee. So the link to buy me a coffee can be found in the description box below. Take care and have an amazing day further. Bye for now.